Hey Soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot and in today's reading we're taking a look at what pain point is turning into a huge blessing in this next phase of your life. To do this reading I will be pulling out three cards from this deck. If you prefer to, of course, as always, pick your piles using your zodiac signs, you will find a timestamp for that down in the description box. Okay, so let's check out what our cards are for today's reading. For pile number one, you've got Invite Peace. For pile number two, you've got Decide for Yourself. And for pile number three, you've got Seek Counsel. If you prefer to pick your piles using your crystals, then let me add these right now. There we go. So for pile number one, you've got the Dalmatian Jasper point. For pile number two, you've got the Bloodstone point. And for pile number three, you've got the rose quartz point. So take a look at which one of these three piles you're the most drawn to. And this will be the pile for you here today. In case you feel drawn to more than one pile, maybe even all of the piles Trust your intuition. It will always guide you to the readings that you're meant to hear. And once you're ready, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times, which will take you straight to your readings. And please note that in a moment, I will be assigning different zodiac signs to each pile. And so if this is something that you do not prefer, please pause the video and take as much time as you need. But if you prefer to pick your piles using your signs, then as you know, this part of the introduction was created specifically for you so that you can do just that. Pick your piles using your zodiac sign. And in a moment, I will be assigning, I will be pulling out four signs for each pile. I already have three in my hands. Let's draw out the fourth. And so the signs for pile number one are Gemini. Virgo, Taurus, as well as Aries. And the signs for pile number two, one, two, three, four, are Aquarius, Libra, Cancer, as well as Sagittarius. And the signs for pile number three are Scorpio, Leo, Pisces, as well as Capricorn. So my dear soul family, these are the signs and their association to each of the piles in today's reading. Please feel free to pick your pile or piles using your sun, moon or rising. I highly recommend you check out the three. It's of course all up to you if you prefer to pick your piles using other placements in your chart. Feel free to do that. These are just different ways to make it more enjoyable for you and these are just suggestions. At the end of the day, what resonates with you, the way you prefer to pick your pile is of course the best way and the right way for you. And once you're ready, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I will see you in your readings. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at what pain point is now turning into a huge blessing. 
So, oh, looks like you've got three cards from this deck. By the way, if you're interested in any of the decks that I use in any reading, you'll find that I always list them down in the description box for you guys. But very quickly before we begin, let me introduce your pile to you. Your crystal is the beautiful Dalmatian Jasper point. Your Significator card is the Invite Peace card with the number, ooh, this one moved, 29. And if you've picked your pile using your Zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Gemini, Virgo, Taurus, and Aries. Welcome to your reading. If these are not your signs, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. Okay, I think all your cards are ready. Let's create space and check out your Oracle cards first. You've got neighbors. Okay, that was surprising. <laughs> so yeah, tenants, house party, lawn mower, gossip, creepy guy. Okay, so you've got neighbors. You've got the urbane, the her, uh, uh, sorry, the henbane, away with the fae. We'll check out this card in a moment. You've got uncertainty with choose who you will become. All right. And you've got Mars in Virgo with criticism, as well as the moon in Cancer with friendship. And Sun in Gemini with versatility. Very cool. I think we need your tarot cards. This way we understand what is that pain point that is now turning into a huge blessing. Invite peace. Huh? So you've got the Five of Pentacles. The Two of Wands. The Nine of Wands. The Eight of Pentacles. Look at that. You're being offered something, right? One time you don't see it. Another time you see it. But you don't see it because you're in a lot of pain. Perhaps this is why it says invite peace. Five of Pentacles is disappointment. And then you've got criticism here. So maybe you're not able to receive something because of some disappointment or pain. And then with the Eight of Pentacles, the card of mastery, you receive it. Mm, something standing in your way here. You can only see it once you remove these obstacles. You've got the King of Pentacles. And the Five of Swords. Here you can see the Mer children playing with a tool. They didn't know how dangerous it was. And you can see here that they're starting to realize that some things are not to be played with. Mm. Mm, I think we can, we can have space for one more card. That's going to be an interesting reading for sure. Ah, look at that, the death card. And you can see they're saving the animals from all the toxicity and the pollution. So what's going on here? Toxic environment. What pain point is now turning into a huge blessing? Are you in a toxic environment? Because at the end of the day, it does say neighbors or... Let's say it means neighborhood, perhaps. Neighbors or a toxic environment of some form, a sort. Maybe you are in a toxic environment <clears throat> that criticized you a lot. The fives, five of pentacles, five of swords, I see with the fives a lot of struggle, a lot of challenges, um, a lot of pains. 
I think you might be in an environment that caused you a lot of pain and hurt. You felt maybe lack alone. Maybe you wanted to be left on your own. It was all fun and games until it wasn't. Yeah, I, I think this is definitely a toxic environment here. That at some point became too toxic. Or a friend. Or may I even say self-criticism. Maybe that neighbor is you. You know, you have to live with yourself. You're accompanying yourself, your mind. And maybe your mind uh, started becoming too uh, harsh. So take it how it resonates, but definitely living within a toxic environment, whether this is in the mind or your outside environment or maybe even a friend. I think that's what the reading is pointing towards. Just to check, I will see the Henbane um, card and see what it says. Perhaps it will provide us a little perspective on what we're seeing. If I'm not seeing it, the henbane away with the fay. So it says henbane doesn't mean to doesn't mean to be strange, but the normal rules of reality don't seem to apply to them. Yeah, you seem like you're out, you're in an environment where you don't fit in. Maybe hmm. they have their feet firmly planted in mid air and are often described as being away with the fairies. They live in their own little world. That's what I felt, right? <laughs> Unaware of the effect they have on others. Okay. Their eyes are slightly glazed and they are hard to reach. That's what I felt. Henbane will not be enticed to partake in the everyday preferring escapism and being lost in dreams. That's what I felt. So yes, we're on the right track. I would say you definitely are in a toxic environment. And look at all the volcanoes. It's like you're always wary. You're always on the lookout. What's going to explode? Who's gonna do what? You're guarding your boundaries very well. Like that's the strongest thing you do. You're, you, you keep up walls that can never be crossed like you've got that so well <laughs> and with this huge castle i believe you have built your own beautiful world and the five of pentacles with the lack you're refusing the lack is you not taking right it's not that you can't have you're being offered and you're like no 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 thank you no thank you eight of pentacles in that case shows that you do accept with more mature people, Eight of Pentacles, people who maybe have more mastery over their emotions, because here with the Five of Swords, it's a bit too immature, like throwing in things around, saying words around, ideas around that, and they don't know the consequences of it. So maybe that's not you being shocked. This is the environment or the people surrounding you who um, don't know the consequences of the actions that they take or the words that they say and when it hits them it shocks them so yeah a lot of immaturity there coming from someone who's grounded and mature but when it comes to your environment you're not grounded in reality as we can see with the handbane you're in you're in your own bubble in your own life you're like midway you're there but you're not there i believe this is the situation because really, I, I don't think you feel like you fit in, as we've read in the handbang. You don't feel like you belong to this super toxic environment. And yeah, I, although the handbang gives us an idea that you could be like, you know, you're not present in the moment, you're not grounded, but really you are with the King of Pentacles. You are grounded. You're just not... You're phased out from that environment. Um, yeah, you're more mature. If I can say this politely, you're more mature, more grounded, more balanced with the King of Pentacles and your walls. You don't joke about that. <laughs> and that's because 
with the immaturity and the super toxicity here, you're always wary what's going to explode. I'm sorry about that. So what's about to change here seems to be in the area of friendships, your connections with others. How's that changing? Very interesting. Neighbors, are you changing neighbors? Maybe you're moving to somewhere else? Just a guess, I could be wrong. Let's see, uh, versatility. There's some flexibility going on here. Maybe you're becoming flexibility, flexible. I highly doubt it with the refusal. Maybe, who am I to judge? I think the, the best course of action to take now is to check the specific part of Alice's story. I don't know what they're referring to. Choose who you will become. Number 39, what are they referring to here in the Alice story? So it says the caterpillar and Alice looked at each other for some time in silence. At last, the caterpillar took the hookah out of its mouth and addressed her in a languid, sleepy voice. Who are you? said the caterpillar. This was not an encouraging opening for a conversation. Alice replied rather shyly, I, I hardly know, sir. Just at present, at least, I know who I was when I got up this morning. Mm. But I think I must have changed several times since then. How interesting. I think we're starting to grasp this criticism. I think through it all, you've also seen your weak points. So that's what it's about. So although this toxic environment was super harsh, but it was so strong that it showed you what you weren't seeing about yourself uh, previously. Mm, it was so weird, just like when Alice went into the rabbit hole, it was so weird that it allowed you to open your eyes. See, and criticism isn't bad. It's just uh, knowing the weak points so that you can blossom. So you were able to see where you needed to grow and you're blossoming here. So very quickly, it says when Alice meets the caterpillar, he wants her to tell him who she is, what she is. Alice feels she cannot answer as she is changing so much on her journey through Wonderland. Exactly. <laughs> she is un, uh, unused to being so tall. It feels strange to be so small. But her indecision, sadness and uncertainty are not met with sympathy. That's a definite environment for change. Instead, the caterpillar gifts her the chance to change herself to a size she feels comfortable with. He does not tell her how she should feel or what size she should be, but he does offer her the keys to self-empowerment by suddenly letting her know she can choose her own size with the aid of the mushroom. It's rarely so easy. Empowerment cannot be instantaneously given to you. You can't decide what you want to be and immediately be there. It's a journey. On the way, you will make errors of judgment and it is only through the willingness to learn, experiment, try, fail, retry and fail again that you will come to understand what must be done to be who you wish to be. Interesting. Advice on what we must do to be empowered is an offer, but... If you expect it to be easy, quick, or something another person does for you, you will soon learn the process is trickier and more arduous. Ultimately, it is far more rewarding than you could ever have thought. So that's really very clear. You're reading super clear. What's changing here is you with the flexibility card. Sun and Gemini, your communication. Remember when we were talking about Alice's size? She can... Uh, through the tools, learn how to become bigger and smaller. He doesn't tell her what size she should be, but gives her the tool, the advice. And so here, it's like you were thrown into a toxic environment uh, that was super harsh. The, I mean, the weather here is very harsh. Um, it's cold in the North Pole. You know, it, the, the environment, the ambiance is very harsh. And so it allowed you to see your weak points and 
uh, it allows you to become more flexible. It's not like you should change your values, for example, or change your identity or change your beliefs, but it's more about becoming flexible, learning to become flexible. You are who you are, but you must adapt to the environment without changing who you are. So that's what I'm learning here, your communication, learning to understand your environment. Who wants to, for example, live right next to a volcano, right? Nobody. But if this is your home, then you learn to adapt to it. You, you understand about what to look out for, what to hear, when to move out. I, I don't live next to a volcano, so I could be like um, not explaining how to survive this properly. But I'm just trying to display an idea that you understand more about it so that you can survive it. You become more flexible. You don't go there to die, but you learn how to adapt to this environment and survive. So this uh, environment definitely gave you a lot of tools, valuable tools with the Eight of Pentacles that helped you become stronger, become confident with the Nine of Wands, learned how to stand tall and strong when you need to, you know, how Alice becomes bigger, and learn when to not engage, maybe, when Alice becomes smaller. or uh, Yeah, that flexibility of what you need to do depending on the environment is really what this harsh uh, situation, neighborhood, place has definitely taught you. And so, as we'll explore um, what's about to happen, I'm getting an inkling with invite peace that this pain point is turning to you living, learning to live in peace despite the environment and the entourage. You've learned what it means like to live in peace, most importantly, you, because you've uh, learned to be more flexible. You know how they say confidence is not um, is not not being afraid of any situation. Confidence is uh, relying on your abilities to handle a situation if it should happen. Things happen to everyone. But it's about learning that you keep, that you in being in the knowing that you can handle a situation. So that's what I'm seeing so far. Let's expand and see how this uh, a piece is happening. How is this turning into a huge blessing for you? So you've got the magician. You've got the tools. The magician has the four elements, the tools that he or she uses to create magic and we've learned from the Alice card that you were given the tools uh, you've been giving given the teachings give provided the tools to uh, to deal with anything now you've you know the magician is a skilled archetype you've become skilled now in fact with the eight of pentacles it's the same thing You've become skilled. So one of your blessings is your skill, learning to deal in any environment. Second blessing is that you're going to be living in peace. Third blessing that I'm seeing is that you're starting to now, you're about to create new friendships. So let's take a look at the rest of your cards. Wow, you've got the star card. I've got surprises here for you. You've got many blessings happening because of that. <laughs> Look at that, the Queen of Cups. Look at all of that. Wow, the movement. You've got the Hierophant. Powerful cards. I mean, mostly are Major Arcana and a Court card. Wow, the sun card. Wow, wow. Okay. And finally, the high priestess. Guys, the second row is all major arcana, which, uh, except for the queen of cups, which puts a highlight actually on the queen of cups. Queen of cups is someone being balanced emotionally. 
So being balanced emotion, emotionally gives you um, sort of grace and authenticity that nobody can take from you. In fact, you know, like all the toxic people, um, like um, let's call one out, the narcissist, for example, um, who, do, who do they most have issues with? despite their toxicity. It's an authentic person because an authentic person knows their worth. They know the good things about them. They know what where they lack. Uh, and so when when they're praised, you know, they don't uh, they don't get into a bubble that would burst. They don't they don't when they're criticized, they don't fall or shake off the ground. They they know all of this. The the things that they know they should work on, they're already working on it, doesn't hurt them when you criticize them, and or they see it as room for growth, and as well as uh, when when you compliment them, they don't fly off, you know, with their ego about to burst. And so they know when to walk away, they know that when there's toxicity, they don't engage in the games, This we can go on about emotional balance and authenticity. That's what I'm seeing being highlighted here with the Queen of Cups. First of all, you're that great change. Having balance of emotions creates elegance and grace. And it definitely provides you peace of mind. That's one of the biggest energies here. That's your Significator card. Invite peace. I see you next enjoying the blessing of peace because... Immaturity, uh, toxicity doesn't crawl under your skin, doesn't get to you anymore, doesn't hurt you anymore. You're good. So I love seeing this for you. And the blessing. Of course, that's, that's a huge blessing. That's a huge blessing. But the rest of the blessings, because you've got so many major arcanas here. Other than the highlight here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, five major arcanas. I almost feel like this is a trumpet going to do, 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 congratulations, <laughs> because the clouds are kind of connecting, right? So I, I, I see a congratulations moment. You've really learned with the Hierophant, your inner child is thriving and shining bright. You're getting more in touch with your intuitive side. Your psychic side is, uh, there's no veil between you and your uh, psychic abilities. There's so many changes going on here. Inner child thriving, psychic ability on fleek <laughs> and your capability of learning and growing has been fully unleashed, if we can say that. Um, you're able to see well with the High Priestess. You're able to see beyond things. There's nothing clouding your vision anymore. Um, you can see clearly now. Which makes me think of the song, I can see clearly now the rain is gone, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, yeah, can see clearly now that the rain is gone or the rain is gone. So that um, rain, times of crying, times of sadness, that tough environment, that's over. The rain is gone. Now it's a positive time of your life. You've really learned a lot and you've really grown emotionally. I can see you now opening up emotionally to others. You're no longer reclused. You're now opening up. You've mastered your emotions and you're opening up to others, but a healthier, definitely. They're more like Faye here. They're more like you. <laughs> you're opening up. You're learning to pick your environment. Maybe you've got access to a better environment. That could be another thing. And you're, uh, your grounded self, your more grounded, powerful self, as well as your emotional balance is now showing. And you're very open to accepting friendships from others, which is about to happen next in your life. 
Um, I also see you very proud of the type of flexibility you've learned, how you've learned to be, have you, how you've mastered to, I don't want to say fit into an environment, but more adapt to an environment that at least you have to be in. Like you can always walk away if you don't want, but sometimes, you know, sometimes it's not that easy. And when that not that easy comes again, you know what to do. But I definitely see you walking away from this toxic environment up next, which is a huge blessing. It says invite peace. The peace has already started within you and it's taking you to a new environment where you will be making new friends and you will watch yourself blossom even more mm. because you've already grown and blossomed. There's the star card and the magician. I kind of feel like there is something magical happening here. I should explore that. Uh, I know that this is about how you're now getting in touch because the Hierophant High Priestess, this is high psychic powers. This is a new era of being more in touch with your psychic powers and as a consequence, gaining access to, dare I say, I will say the Akashic records, like hidden knowledge. This will allow you to gain access to hidden knowledge. That's what I'm seeing. So that's what I'm telling you. Like you can see it so clearly now. That's going to happen next with that emotional ability. Because obviously you started off as being very psychic. So <laughs> no surprise there. Uh, and I want to know what this is for you. The magician and the star. Because I feel like I'm missing something. Am I missing something? What is the magician and the star showing us, please? Because there's something here for sure. Something is growing. I was right. Seven of Pentacles, something. It's like, be patient. Something is brewing. Something is happening. Just be patient. There's more for sure. So I would say the star card is a huge dream that you have. It's coming true. It's growing at the moment. Brewing. So just give it this time and know that something magical is going to happen. A miracle even. Uh, because a baby is a miracle. Is this you? Is, is this you becoming like uh, another person? So maybe it's two things. It, it, I think it's two things. Two things for sure. First, so the magic and the star are talking about two things. First of all, we know that there's something magical happening, just like the way babies are created. Uh, you know, a soul, we have a new baby, right? It's a miracle, no question about it. We have all the scientific reasons for it, but at the end of the day, it is a miracle. So like there is a miracle in process, I would say, as well as the star here talking about how you're healing your old pain and you're transcending into a new person. You're becoming the star. Oh, are you becoming a star? Maybe you're becoming popular in this new environment that you're getting into. The, the friendships you're going to. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so in the old environment, you were recluse. You didn't like it for good reasons, of course. Now that you've grown in this new environment that with people matching your energy, the phase, right? Here, not only do you see yourself growing out of that pain, you've become more flexible, but in this new environment, you're loved and you will be a star. And yeah, that is exactly what I see in your reading. What pain point is now turning into a huge blessing? I wish you the best of luck, my dear pile number one. I'm very sorry about this toxic environment, but that's in the past. As the Ten of Swords show, that's all in the past. You're rising, 
like a star. This is exactly what I see for you. I truly hope you've enjoyed your reading. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. It's a closure on this old world and there is a new one for you, especially with a huge surprise coming up here. Look out for that. And my dear pile number one, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Today we're taking a look at what pain point is now turning into a huge blessing. These are the decks that I'll be using for your reading today. If you're interested in knowing the names of any of them, you'll find that I always list them down in the description box for you guys. Okay, so very quickly, let me introduce your pile to you. Your crystal is the beautiful bloodstone point. And uh, your significator card is decide for yourself. And if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Aquarius, Libra, Cancer, and Sagittarius. Welcome to your reading. If these are not your signs, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. Okay, so the cards are ready. Let's take a look at your oracle cards first. You've got Aram, Lily. There. Courage of Convictions. We're going to be reading about this one. Courage of con Convictions. You've got Impossible Things. Working through disbelief, imagination, uh, um, imaginative leaps, fresh perspective. Yeah, the, I know this is a card about Alice who just can't believe what's going on in down the rabbit hole and the queen teaches her that she's got to be more open than that uh, and to learn to believe the unbelievable. In fact, there's a funny quote where she says, I used to, when I was your age, I used to believe 10 uh, impossible things before breakfast. So <laughs> there's this idea of believe the unbelievable there's no such thing as imp impossible impossible is nothing in fact it does say here decide for yourself so let's see what this is all about you've got virus okay mm. virus it could be something a pain point it could be an illness right with virus and also, it could be a situation that's so stubborn uh, that you feel like it's nearly impossible that it's going you're going to get out of this, but it says the impossible is nothing. Uh, it does seem that this pain point that looks impossible for it to change, you know, it just shows medical research. It is going to change. Uh, it is going to change. So it's not impossible. It's turning into a huge blessing. So Mars in Virgo with criticism. If you're drawn to pile number one, that's the exact card that they've got. So what are the odds? Also, the six, you can check it out if you feel drawn to it. Definitely recommend it. Sixth house is also health. So for a lot of you listening to this pile, it seems like um, it has to do with your health. Like there's something that's stubborn here. And you feel like, oh my God, it's impossible. But really it's not. It says decide for yourself. Um, impossible is nothing. You, It will turn into a blessing. Can I place this card here? I don't know. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, that's what we need to do. Just like that. Yeah, that's better. Now you can see your cards. Okay, finally, you've got, oh, cool, Mercury and Gemini with excitement. So you're going to be hearing great news. Oh, great. Okay, so let's pull out your tarot cards and get more information on this. What pain point is now turning into a huge blessing? For pile number two, please. It's 
So it's definitely a stubborn situation, something you got so used to for a while or maybe for a long time. Uh, and you just labeled yourself as uh, having to live with it or having it or something like that. It's like it's become nearly become a part of you. It's like, yeah, I'm like that or yeah, I got that or something like that. And uh, it's not impossible. You're going to hear some great news. There's cleansing going on here. So look, I was just saying there's cleansing. <laughs> You've got the Ace of Cups. There's healing. There's cleansing. There's new energy all around regarding this energy for sure. And you're going to be hearing some great news about it. Wow, we've got the Ten of Pentacles. Great. Lovely to see. You've got the Magician. It's really going to turn into a, such a huge blessing that with the magician, it's going to feel like magic. You're going to feel like whose hands ha has done that? The hand of spirit, the hand of God. I feel like you're going to say the universe has done this for me or God has done this for me. It's going to be that magical. It's like I don't think you're going to um, find a, a logical explanation. It just feels like... It just happened. Like, how did this happen? You know, this reminds me of when you go to the doctor and they check your um, blood work, for example, or your results, and they go, what? It disappeared. It's not there. And you're like, what? You know? So some miracle. I would translate this as a miracle 100%. You've got the tower card. The, you've got the uh, Empress. Wow. Beautiful energy. Temperance, healing. And the Hanged Man. I will fix this in a moment. Right, so what are we seeing? I'm seeing this as surprising news. Enlightenment, surprise, that's all the tower card. So there is something super surprising, but it's in your favor because temperance and the empress uh, shows that there's great health, empress, right? Beauty, health, health again, uh, balance, having something awesome after waiting for a long time. You've been stranded there with this difficult situation. It's kept you hanging there, hanging there. And it's almost like you've accepted living like that. But also the hanged man is illumination. So there is a lot of cards showing us the idea of you being illuminated by something finding out about something which makes me want to check out your uh, arum lily card perhaps it does say sorry i would it's to give us more perspective but it does show us believe in the impossible remember the queen told alice <laughs> when i was your age i used to believe in 10 impossible things before breakfast practice believing in 10 things <laughs> before breakfast so the situation went to change. You're going to see weird things about it. That's why I've got the Magician card. It's gonna, this, this is like a combo of miracles. You're going to be super surprised. And you're going to think this is a miracle. Like that's how I always saw myself. Or for a long time, that's how I saw myself. Or saw my situation. How, how, how am I in this position now? which really makes me curious again about this Aram Lily card. So it's the number eight. Oh, it opened right there. It says, the disempowered Aram lives in doubt and fear. Mm. They are constantly worried about what others will think of them or if they are doing the right thing. They are scared of being judged, cancelled and shut down for their beliefs. As a result, Aram does nothing and remains stuck. That gives us definitely perspective. Okay. 
does nothing and remains stuck. Criticism actually, actually looks like I've missed something huge here. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's go over that again. The disempowered Aram, Aram lives in doubt and fear. They are constantly worried about what others will think of them or if they are doing the right thing. They are scared of being judged, canceled, and shut down for their beliefs. As a result, Aram does nothing and remains stuck. Their beautiful gifts to humanity, languishing and becoming atrophied, atrophied. Atro atrophied. I'll check that word in a moment. They need to practice their resilience by fully believing in themselves and standing up for the naysayers with power and grace. Aram needs to have the courage of their convictions. Okay, so whether the part up here holds true or not, but there's something about not holding on to your beliefs and it says impossible is nothing working through disbelief you see and it says aram needs to have the courage of their convictions i know in the context what it means but really in the context of your reading it could have double meaning you know in the context of your reading so far other than the other meaning that we could explore is that what held you back for so long uh, you know, the sixth house, Virgo, they're very critical. Um, very, sometimes, unless they're super spiritual, of course, inflexible with, see, with seeing the bigger picture. And thus, they may not see the magic sometimes because they're like, how is this happen? How is this possible? It, this doesn't make any logical sense. Do you see one plus one equals two? So how is that going to happen? So perhaps you get into the nitty gritty so much, which is awesome. How can we take that away from Virgo, right? They're perfectionists. We need that. But so much so that you forgot the bigger picture, which is spirituality. Yes, it does look impossible, doesn't it? But equally, there is equally a miracle. And that is going to happen. So you want to have the courage Although it could be very hard in your situation because it looks like, right, how is that going to happen? You may, may have even caught yourself uh, during this reading going, right, how is that going to happen? What miracle are you talking about? <laughs> if that holds true, that's more true for you. 100% your reading. And it's saying, believe that there is bigger things. Believe in the impossible and in fact, practice in that in doing that there is balance in getting into the details and looking at things logically and also knowing that there's far more than this uh, perspective there's more that we don't know about um, the more we know right the more we know the more we understand the different possibilities now the reading was also talking about criticism, being afraid of being judged, which is here. Hmm. I'm not sure how it's connected, but I promise I will not disregard it because the energy is there. I think criticism has been holding you back as well. Fear of criticism has been holding you back. Perhaps that's another pain point that is also turning into a, a huge blessing. It seems like there's dual nature here, a dual message, I mean, in your reading. Yeah, for sure. It does look like that. Okay, so the more information I get about this one, I will talk to you about it. But for now, I do know that there is great news that you're going to be here about be hearing about a miracle healing from a situation that seemed impossible to you and i think this situation will super surprise you that's why i've got the tower card right in the middle of your reading like poof, poof, poof. 
what? It's, I think it's going to crack your mind open. It will open your mind to understanding that there is, in fact, a spiritual aspect to things. Um, that there is more. That there is definitely more to what meets the eye. I will say, however, that you're being still convinced to make that decision for yourself. I think the more you decide that it isn't impossible, the faster this happens for you. At the end of the day, the card says working through disbelief. Let's get now more information about uh, how it's turning into a huge blessing. And perhaps we'll get also more information about the criticism part here. So, because there seems to be dual a dual message. Yeah, I think it's a dual message. Maybe it's hard for you to... Oh, 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 I got this. There's a ghost here. Expansion of mind, I think, is not allowing you to see far because there's a ghost here. I think I got the message. At the root of this, why there isn't an expansion there is perhaps an inner critic that's making it very difficult a harsh inner critic that's making it very difficult to bypass that limitation and look at the possibility of things becoming possible of, of the impossible becoming possible because there's a grasp with the virus here, a grasp over this situation and you've got an inner critic making it hard. So let's explore more about this inner critic. We don't we do know that you're supposed to decide for yourself to have your own beliefs, to believe. Yeah, decide for yourself to believe. As a result, Aram does nothing and remains stuck. They're beautiful gifts to humanity languishing and becoming atro atropied. Hold on. Atrophied, wasted away. Hmm. Hmm. So you've got the high priestess. Seeing the unseen. Becoming aware of that sneaky, critical voice that's perhaps making you afraid to act, talk, otherwise you're criticized. Because it looks like at the root of things, this is the actual virus that rather than the situation itself. And deciding for yourself to believe rather than believe the voice of the critic heals this inner child with the Six of Cups. Doesn't keep you suspended and allows you to heal and allows the impossible to become possible because that voice frustrates you. Um, it's preventing that balance. Perhaps it's a voice um, that started at, as an inner child and uh, you want to be aware of it. Don't let your gifts be atrophied, right? Ace of Swords, again, alertness, aware, awareness, truth. Knight of Pentacles. This one slid out. Judgment, again, awareness, awareness, awareness. Okay. So, what is this saying about the blessing? There's a new page. A new beginning here, a new mental beginning with the Ace of Swords. Of your mind becoming super alert. Watching that critic and going, ah, I saw you, I saw you. Allowing two things to happen simultaneously. A miracle, which will surprise you, it will blow your mind. And it will give you the Empress, health and the temperance card. Health, balance beauty, 
blessings, manifestation, so much. It will give you so much and it will allow you to finally release this next point here. It allows you to release what's been holding you back for so long. And that is that critical voice. That critical voice needs to go and it shall go if you decide. So how do you heal all of that? To simply believe in the impossible. So I will pull out some cards to see how you can believe in the impossible. But the second blessing that's happening here is that you will now start to see it everywhere. Ah, that's my ghost. That's my critic. Uh, I, you, I, it was invisible. Now you can see it. And you can start to heal slowly but surely. But you can start to heal, heal your inner child and your mind becomes sharp. It's not so zoomed, just zoomed in at one thing so well. But there's general awareness, better judgment with the judgment card. And not to mention that your capability of manifest unleashes and so to have this a new beginning there must be a fresh perspective of believing in the impossible that's the healing point the conviction believing in the impossible heals all of that automatically for you so how can you do that since this is the decision that you're guided to take uh, yes, it is a pain point that will turn into a huge blessing, but it starts by a decision, a fresh perspective. And since believing in the impossible sounds easy, but with that voice may not be easy. And that's why I want to pull out cards to see how can you apply that? How can you believe in the impossible? How are you guided to do that? Because once you take that decision, you will see that you will be hearing great news that will really look like a miracle. So how can you believe in the impossible? And follow that guidance, Four of Swords. Two of Cups. Four of Cups. And the Chair. Yeah, the two snakes of the two of cups definitely remind me of a Kundalini rising. So it's like working with something harmoniously will just kind of like heal the chakras down up automatically, general health. It will transform you because the lion of the two of cups represents alchemy. So does the temperance. It represents turning regular metal into gold. It's the combination of sulfur and mercury to turn regular metal into gold uh, talking about the soul's journey to growth so there's something about if you work with something in harmony you, it, you automatically grow it will surprise you so with the Four of Swords, it's like there isn't actually much to do except with the mind. The calmer you are, this is talking about lack of engagement. To not engage with this voice. To choose what to take and what to not take. You have that choice. Ah, You absolutely have that voice. Choice? have that voice and have that choice and you have you fully have the choice because of you know how the arms are crossed here the yin and the yang which direction you want to move in you have the power to disengage when that voice comes in yeah they, they can be there it's okay it can be there just don't engage with it disconnect that way Instant healing starts to happen. And you start finally moving forward. That's when the miracles happen. That's the decision. When the voices come, don't engage and remind yourself there's no such thing as impossible. No such thing as impossible. Disengage. Don't interact with that voice. Also, the Two of Cups is a card of love. 
So while criticism is harsh, this is guidance of speaking to yourself kindly and lovingly instead. It's kind of like, ah, no, no, it's okay. Let's now take a break. Let's disengage. Let's disengage. Let's not take in these thoughts and disconnect until these thoughts uh, dis disseminate until it goes away and now you're standing powerful you can move you've made that choice this way yeah just don't take it in speak to yourself kindly and this voice is about to leave your life once this voice is out which seems to be soon here completely soon something that you can absolutely do disengage with it you will be hearing about a miracle that will blow your mind. Okay, so now that we've explored it fully, let's take a look at this miracle and get more information about the nature of the exciting news and the miracle that is about to happen in your life. How is that pain point turning into this miracle? The Three of Pentacles. Another three, the Three of Wands. And look at that, three, three. That can't be a coincidence. Three, 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 wow. So <laughs> what's up with the threes? The Fool card. A fresh new start. It's as if nothing happened before. Fresh, uh, fresh start. Complete for it's like a restart button. It's as if nothing has ever happened to you. The threes are the smallest number you need to create a, a form, right? Uh, yeah, a form. And so I had an idea here. Oh, yeah, uh, it's like from thin air, something forms energy from the ether starts forming it's like magic real real magic here three 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 something magical begins with the three of wands the threes numerologically is like th many things working together as one or to say it better the power of singular forces uh, separate forces to work together as one so seeing the threes and the magician with all the different tools, it looks to me like your rational mind will look and go, oh, well, it, it, it's definitely a miracle, but it is a miracle. Like, how did these things come together? I mean, I know I had this situation. I know I had this doctor. I know I had this. But the way it played out together is just such a miracle. Who would have believed that these elements or singular forces will come together to make this happen? That's the translation, literal translation of the miracle happening here. You will, the, the weird things coming together going, oh, Oh, so that's how they work together. And through their working together, there's cleansing, a new start, a fresh new start, a start, cleansing, a, a start over from the beginning, as if nothing happened at all. And what a miracle is that? And I think from this moment onwards, you will believe in the impossible, but you will believe in the impossible. It doesn't begin by seeing a miracle. It shall begin by believing in a miracle, seeing it, and then solidifying that belief. It's not going to be the other way around. And remember, this begins by a thought. The universe is the mind. Everything was created through the mind. In fact, in esoteric philosophy, the whole universe was 
created through what is explained as God's mind, a thought that turned into energy that changed everything. And so it's a thought that you're guided to do. What's the thought? There, there's a destructive thought, and we took that out of the way, that you are not going to engage with anymore. You're not going to engage with that. You're going to choose a different way of moving forward. And that is loving yourself, self-love, communicating with love, choosing to come. It's like, hey, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Let's take a break. Let's take a break here. And then you uh, calm down and lose that. The more you stop engaging and calm down, the more you solidify the other way of feeling things. And just like the symbolism of this reading, you lose that critical voice forever. And my dear pile number two, this is exactly what I see in your reading as what pain point is now turning into a huge blessing. You could even be in the process of all of this. Maybe some of you have been nodding all along and going, yep, that's exactly what I've been doing. <laughs> so congratulations. This is now turning into a blessing. A miracle is happening and something that was stubborn in your life and an inner child is healing. Your mind's becoming more alert. And my dear pile number two, that's exactly what I see in your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And my dear pile number two, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye! Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at... Sorry, I thought the camera wasn't <laughs> shooting for a moment. So today, we're taking a look at what pain point is now turning into a huge blessing. So these are the decks that I'll be using. If you're interested in knowing the names of any of them, you'll find that I always list them down for you guys down in the description box. Okay, so before we begin, very quickly, let me introduce your pile to you. Your crystal is the beautiful Rose Quartz Point. Your, oh, looks like we've got a card sticking out. Your Significator card is Seek Counsel. And if you've picked your pile using your Zodiac Signs, then in that case... The signs for this pile are Scorpio, Leo, Pisces, and Capricorn. Welcome to your reading. If these are not your signs, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. Right, so let's get straight into it. Yes, we're shooting. I don't know why I keep worry. Everything is working good. That's great. Right, let's take a look at your Oracle cards. So you've got Lily of the Valley with Open Your Heart. You've got clock time. So this is Alice. You've got time, pressure, and a rush. This is probably when she was in the tea time, and it was always six o'clock time, or that time was running with the rabbit. Let me check, check which one this is so that we uh, understand the context of the reading. Yes, it is, in fact, when the rabbit was rushing because he was running out of time. Okay, you've got Mercury in Capricorn with organization. Oh, this must be talking about your work, business, something like that. Interesting for this pile. All right, time is ticking. Maybe you've got a project uh, that's a pain point that you're trying to finish or your business or your something in your career like time is ticking so the pain point here is talking about pressure and time and trying to finish something oh look at that interesting card um it says mistaken identity so some of the keywords here are wrongfully accused or clones maybe um someone is uh, imitating you with the clones uh costume red tape Lookalikes, yeah, there's something about someone taking your work. Perhaps that's another pain point. Mm. Impersonation, again, you keep getting that. 
comedy of errors, imposter. Maybe there is imposter syndrome for some of you if you like, oh, I'm acting like I know what I'm doing, but maybe um, you feel like you don't, something like that. Involuntary political leader. Any case, there seems to be something about the talk, the, the talk, the clock ticking. You're running out of time, you're rushing, it's causing a lot of pressure for you. And yeah, you don't know what to do about it. You feel like you're afraid that someone's gonna copy your work. Someone is gonna think you're not maybe the right person with imposter syndrome or someone copying you or someone pretending to be you or something, some pretentiousness going on. Okay, so that's the type of energy that I see so far. It's not the full one. Let's pull out your cards and see the full picture with what pain point is now turning into a huge blessing. Right, so the first card is the Seven of Cups, getting lost with choices, really not knowing what to do. Ooh, Knight of Cups. There's something about you getting offered. Everyone's trying to get your attention. And you're running out of time. And you're like, oh, I don't know what you want to choose. Uh, who's kind of like who's lying to me? Are, are, are these even connected? I just got to be patient. You know, it's like, who's lying? Who's saying the truth? And... Maybe you've got two pressures, perhaps. Let's let me wait. But you definitely have something about a lot of offers trying to lure you in, speak to the heart, and you're like, I don't know. So six of cups. The two of wands. Again, choices, choices, choices. Hmm. And look, here you've got... Choice one and choice two, making an important choice. You're really under pressure trying to make the right choice and the time is ticking. Seek counsel. Oh, okay. The Knight of Wands, another knight, another offer. Strength card. Feels so homey and sweet, this strength card. <laughs> okay. And it talks about generations, right? The energies here are so dispersed. There's something about childhood here because not only is there a child in the strength card, uh, there is also children in the six of cups. So maybe you're pressured because you're worried about your children? I don't know. Passing something from one generation to another, the Hierophant. What is up here? What is up here? I think I'm so personally lost in this reading a little bit, to be honest. Let's try to like find the thread. I'm going to start with Lily of the Valley here. It's number seven and let's see what it shows us. Hmm. Open your heart. Okay, cool. really nice. Lily has closed their heart. They no longer want to get close to others. Oh, so that was like starting a thread here. Oh, is this the pressure of finding the... So for some of you, it's the pressure of finding the right person. For some of you, it's the pressure of time and your work. Maybe even both. Who knows? They no longer want to get close to others because they know they will just end up being hurt. Lily knows that nothing lasts and feels that the pain of losing someone is not worth the love they have invested. Lily has convinced themselves that being alone is best. Okay, so that's so clear. You're getting offers right, left and center or that's about to happen. Uh, but you're like, I don't know if I like that. Maybe you've got worries about growing old and alone versus being surrounded by warmth and family. Children, maybe. 
convince themselves that being alone is best. So they push people away and will not pursue relationships, even though this will bring them much joy. So there are two energies in this reading. There are two pain points and there are two blessings because of the pain points, because that's the question of the reading. There is pressure when it comes to your work and your organization and making things happen. Part of you feels like you can make it happen. Another part is like, can I, but, but can I? So that's the work part, but your cards are also, or are you making a choice between pursuing your work versus getting into uh, like a relationship? Will it hinder maybe what you're trying to do? So three energies here, depending on how this resonates for you. You clicked on this reading, it's yours. It's either just relationships for you or just work for you. Both and or uh, one affecting the other. It's a choice. Should I pursue this or should I pursue that? So these are the four different energies that I see for this reading as the pain point and the huge blessings. And so I will work in explaining what's going to happen here and what's going to happen with this. And we've got a card answering the choice which is the fourth option. So when it comes to open your heart, it does say open your heart. So when it comes to the time ticking, when it comes to relationships, it seems to me, perhaps this is such a, um, like we've already expressed, described, I mean, in this pile, it is a lot of pressure for you because you're worried with the getting old here. You want, it's important for you to have a loving family, right? It seems like you want to pass on that great hard work and your knowledge and everything from one generation to another. Like you want to pass on the line. And, but at the same time, with choices here, some of you are also burdened by work that was the fourth energy you don't know there's something about your work that's standing in your way maybe you know you need to focus or something so that's there but the other eh, 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 oh let's finish this one first so it looks like up next this pressure it's it's changing forms uh, it's not just giving you one option it's giving you two options. Two energies are going to appear in your area of love. This is not the first time I see two knights offering someone love. If you've been watching the readings recently, it's crazy how the energies repeat themselves, right? Um, I did see it for you guys. It was the reading of what's the universe's plan for you next. It was one of the piles. If, if you've got this and this is the second time, oh guys, this is a confirmation right there. There seems to be two offers coming in, two fated offers coming in. And I see you, whether um, like putting the fourth option aside for now, um, because that pertains to you as well, I see you studying these two. And that again is not the first time I see this energy of two offers coming in and looking at the different um, things, comparing. Perhaps you're attracted to both and you're like, oh, I like both. You can't be, although it's not for me to say, maybe you can. Sorry about that. It's all up to you. But I see here choices like going. Um, who am I more drawn to? You're still discovering, you know, it's a new energy. So definitely two people, very passionate. It's the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Wands. Very passionate about you. And you're like, I don't know. And so the, the suddenly the pain point of fearing time running is shifting into a blessing. But now it's like too much blessings, if we can say that. It's two now. And I see you up next, um, ex 
excited the six of cups you're in your inner child energy you feel excited again it's fun it's engaging it's lovely right there's so much emotional engagement in that area but at the same time you don't know perhaps part of you is uh, still affected by being a bit closed off um, you are very worried we did say lily of the valley is worried about oh past hurt has closed her heart they no longer want to get close to others because they know they will just end up being hurt yes you're afraid of being hurt and so you're take your time i'm just trying to figure out seek counsel if this is the situation i highly recommend or not me your cards are highly recommending with seek counsel that you speak with an expert um a therapist perhaps to help you go through these emotions and especially at a time where this is what you wanted and you're not just getting one you're getting two you get to really explore how you feel and these are two people you're excited about as well so if you feel like you still don't know you're worried uh seek counsel here is talking about um there is a part of uh, turning this pain point into a blessing that is in your hands yes the universe is like suddenly having um opening up this area for you but you also want to open it up within yourself because that's in your hands and you're definitely guided to seek counsel here to speak perhaps this is counseling um because yeah they're very passionate about you and i think you're excited too six of cups your heart is engaged your inner child is excited and happy i see offering you know a lot of offering a lot of excitement from these two people and I see you thinking about it, going, ah, I really like these two. Uh, so which one is it going to be? So that's the first area fully explored um, about, the, about love, the stress of time running out in terms of love. Now, there is also the pressure of your work. Mistaken identity. Taken identity, impersonation, iron mask. No, I think I need more information here. I do see that there is harvest. The har one thing I can tell you before we con like uh, clarify this one, I do see that perhaps again with Lily of the Valley, things were a bit uh, closed off and I see that now the harvest is coming. 10th house is the house of work, your accomplishments, your career, the structure that you put in, you're finally getting the harvest. And you can see the goddess Demeter here, the goddess of harvest. There's a lot of bounty or <clears throat> blessings, wealth, and a, a lot of achievements coming in after waiting for a long time, rushing, trying to make things work, putting in a lot of effort. Uh, so that's great news. That's another pain point that's turning into a huge blessing. I'm not sure what this mistaken identity is talking about. I think I need to clarify before I talk about something and it's not your case. So because there's wrongfully accused, there's cloning, but there's also the imposter syndrome. Maybe it's all of these, depending on who is listening. Can we kindly find out, please? Hermit. This is something personal, the hermit. It could be all or any of the things I talked about. Here. So why is it showing up? There's something inside of you that has been holding you back from this bounty. From, this, from these blessings. And it is your heart closing off. Perhaps due to you feeling like things like 
maybe you don't deserve it, you didn't believe you deserved it, maybe you felt like you weren't interested maybe in what you were doing with the heart closed up off, maybe your heart wasn't into it maybe before, like you worked hard but it's not your thing, mm. maybe somehow you just didn't believe you were going to make it, you were afraid you weren't going to make it, but look at the computer here in the Hermit card being locked. Like this project or, yeah, this project was locked for a while until the right time, divine time. Maybe even, you might even hear some news on the 11th of November. Just a guess. But, uh, keep this date in mind. You might find some great progress during that time. Uh, and yeah, I feel like you're changing from the energy of come on come on just work i'm running out of time to uh oh the, like the pressure of either imposter syndrome or like a lack of belief that you can do it was creating even more pressure just so you know it was locking that energy for you and so here you clear the heart chakra it talks about with seek counsel. Um, maybe you were able to resolve this with seek counsel, or it's guiding you to speak again to seek counseling. At the end of the day, you can see here that by opening up your heart, taking it easy on yourself, and um, not putting a lot of pressure into something to work, taking it easy is the key to unlocking this blocked energy. And it will reap so much um, benefits for you and wealth for you, you won't even believe it. So I say, I say the Sikh Council, either that or it is that counseling here in your reading that's telling you to just open your heart, take it easy, don't be pressured by time. Take it easy, because if you do, you open your heart to that energy and um, you will see wealth coming into your life. Don't wrongfully accuse or decide that this career, project, whatever this is, is not working for you, don't decide that. It's not correct. Open your heart to it and just let it be. Don't be like whenever you get, you find yourself getting into the energy of TikTok, TikTok, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. Know that you're not in the right energy. That's blocking it from you. It's blocking it from you. Just uh, relax. That's your counsel. Relax, take it easy. Don't be uh, in a rush or pressured by time and just leave it easily and you will find that it shall come easily to you and that <clears throat> pain point is now turning into a huge blessing just let it be i believe is your counsel which makes sense because pressure of time is fear at the end of the day and fear definitely is one of the low vibrations so yes your counseling is just let it easy just like the lotus you can't see it it's in the mud it shall rise and open and be beautiful glowing and bright clean and white so just let it be everything takes its time just let it be and um it seems like these days is the time when this is going to happen so open your heart and don't think about the time. Now, when it comes to your relationships, speaking of time, this is a time for commitment, a lifelong commitment from one of these two people. <clears throat> I will try to find out how you're going to meet these people or maybe they're already in your life. But let's see what the card answers about the two choices that you'll be making whether it's the choice between these two or the choice between your career and a lover depending so what does it say here the chariot strategic moves huh 
It actually means play the game. And, and, and I don't mean like relationship games. I'll tell you what I mean exactly. Not relationship games. It means like getting to know people games. What does that mean? It means don't bring out all of your cards. Uh, like have the strategy in mind. Proceed step as a reaction to another step. So don't assume things about people. Don't build an image in your mind about them. Let them show themselves through the actions that they take. And only after they've taken an action, you take an equal action. And through that dynamics, that game of one takes action, so the other one takes another strategic action, you will get to understand more about your opponent, just metaphorically speaking, of course. This way, you're getting offers. You perhaps see them as great, but even if they are both, in fact, great, one of them uh, suits you more, right? Both are great, but people match together differently. Maybe you have different preferences, different shadows meet, right? So you want to take your time. Don't just um, take any decisions. Make, take it move my, by move. And so thus, that's a game. That's the game I'm talking about. Let people show you who they are. Uh, don't make any decisions. You don't have to take any offers right away. Take your time. Six of Cups is uh, growth. Take time for things to grow. And it's okay to get to know people. It's okay to get uh, to know more about them. Yes, they're very passionate about you. But, you know, take it step by step. Be very wise and calculated in the beginning when it comes to your moves. Don't give everything. Don't... Um, uh, reveal everything is what I'm trying to say. Just let it flow naturally so that you can understand more. And when you understand more, you won't be going there putting option one, option two, or choice one or choice two. That's again, metaphorically speaking. Uh, now you understand who you really like. That's what I'm seeing here. And it's the same energy when it comes, if you're like trying to see which energy to go with. Yeah, take time exploring the two and see where's your heart. Is your heart in relationships or is your heart in work? If this is the fourth option for you that we discussed in the very beginning. And you can say, ah, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I love relationships, but no, that's where my heart is at. Or the other way around. Yeah, I love what I'm doing, uh, but this is where my heart is at. Maybe I can do this or that. And I don't know why you would be choosing, but it's not for me to say. I don't know um, anything. This is your reading. I just hope you never have to choose between two things that you love. That's what I wish for you. But again, I don't know what the situation is. Uh, so do what is right for you. And who knows, maybe you can strategically bring the two things that you love together. In any case, between the four, your biggest advice as you go from the pain point to the blessing is not to put yourself in the energy of rushing time. Whenever you find yourself going, oh no, I'm losing time, you know that this is like taking away from the energy of bliss and peace and success. So release it and you, you shouldn't rush. You should imagine and see how much you want from life and what you can get. And that's the energy that you're guided to be in. But at the end of the day, 11.11 shows that this time is near. Just sit back, relax and enjoy the right. This way is a great way to open your heart to that energy, to vibrate in that energy. Yeah, the energy of taking it easy. All right, so finally, any final guidance? Just three cards. Any final guidance here 
since these two pain points are turning into a great blessing very soon. Now, these days, you've got the Ten of Pentacles. This is a message, not really a guidance, but the Ten of Pentacles shows that this is a time of great... Oh, we've got another one. This is a time of great blessings for you. It is a time of great harvest. It is indeed a blessed time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy what the universe is giving to you and the high priestess. And this is saying you've only seen in this reading a little bit from what you're allowed to know. But know that there's so much more that will be revealed to you in due time. This is just the beginning. This pile um, is hit by the beautiful energy of being blessed. It's like you've been kissed by blessings. Kissed by bliss. And yeah, my dear pile number three, this is exactly what I see in your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And my dear pile number three, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.